Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again with the Red Dax Zero, and today we're going to be taking a look at some emulation on the super tiny single board computer using EMU Elect. Now, if you're not familiar with the Red Dax Zero, basically we have the same form factor as the Raspberry Pi Zero, but uh, we have much more power here. This is powered by a quad-core ARM CPU, up to 4 gigabytes of RAM, and up to 128 gigabytes of onboard EMMC storage. And right now, EMU Elect only boots from the internal EMMC storage, and the unit I have in my possession right now has 32 gigabytes of internal storage and 4 gigabytes of RAM. Redaxa will be offering a few different variants of this little board, and it should be released to the public by the end of 2021. I recently did a video showing off some Android performance, and for its size, this is an awesome performing single board computer. Give you a quick rundown on the specs. For the CPU, we have the S905Y2. It's a quad core Cortex A53 CPU running at 1.8 gigahertz. For the GPU, we have the Mali G31 MP2 up to 4 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, eMMC 5.1 built into the board, plus we have a micro SD card slot, micro HDMI, it will do 4K 60 video out, and as for I.O., we have 40 GPIO pins, USB 2.0 Type-C for OTG, and one USB 3.0 Type-C to use as a host. Now, I've already created one video on this running Android from the internal eMMC storage. If you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave a link in the description. But in this one here, we're going to be running an early version of EMU Elect designed specifically for this little board. So this is the way I have it set up right now. I'm using a USB Type-C hub. It just gives me a couple extra USB ports. You can use a single USB Type-C to USB adapter if you'd like to. I'm using a 5 volt 3 amp power supply, but this does draw a lot less energy. This is just a Raspberry Pi power supply I had laying around, so I figured I'd go ahead and plug it in. And I've also rigged up a little fan and heatsink. Just a 5 volt fan and a heatsink from one of my Raspberry Pis. I don't want this thing to thermal throttle. I want to get the maximum performance out of this right now. So this is running from the internal eMMC storage. I will leave a link to the forum post where this image is posted. It is official from EMU Elect. It's very early, and there's a few things that I couldn't get working, like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi right now, but I'm sure it'll be fixed down the road. One thing I had to do was flash this image to the internal eMMC using a Linux PC, and there are talks about SD card support coming. I'm sure it will, and I kind of wish it was already here because it did take a while for me to get this flashed over to the internal storage. It was kind of trial and error, but there wasn't much information on this board yet. They do have a wiki over on Redax's website. I'll leave a link to all of that in the description, but this will be much easier to do later on down the road. So I just went ahead and turned on my frame counter. We're running some Neo Geo here, and going into this with that quad core 1.8 gigahertz CPU, I knew we wouldn't have any issues with the lower end stuff, but I still wanted to test it out. This is Blazing Star, one of my favorite Neo Geo games, and it's running at full speed. I did want to test out some CPS games, but uh, trying to load up a CPS 3 game, at least with the image I have right now, just nets me a black screen. Uh, I've tried basically everything. I originally planned on testing that system, but since I can't get it to work right now, I figured we'll just go over to Game Boy Advance. So here it is, running Sonic Advance 2, and again, just like Neo Geo, I didn't think we'd have much of an issue running this. We got plenty of power for Game Boy Advance games. This is Sonic Advance 2, and uh, my FPS will be listed in the top right-hand corner for all of the systems I'm testing today. So this is looking great. I'll go ahead and exit by pressing Start and Select. It'll bring me right back into EMU Elect, and we'll test out, let's go with N64. We'll do something light here. So far, so good with Diddy Kong Racing. This is definitely playable, and this is using the Mupin 64 Plus Core inside of RetroArch. This is working really well, but it is an easier one to emulate. Once software is cleaned up with EMU Elect on this board, I will be doing some more testing with higher-end games, but I at least wanted to show this off today. I also wanted to show off a little bit of PS1 emulation. This is Colin McRae Rally 2.0, one of my favorite racing games for PlayStation 1. And we're at 60. This is looking really good. It's using the PC SX Rearm Core inside of RetroArch, and we're getting great performance. Now it's time to see how this little board handles Dreamcast. This is using the Flycast Core. Soul Calibur 1, which is an easier one to emulate. I can basically run this on everything, but I still wanted to show it off. We're going to move over to something a little harder in a second. But going into this game, even though I know it's an easier one to emulate, I wasn't expecting 60 out of it.
And just as I thought, moving over to something a little harder to emulate with that Flycast core, here's Crazy Taxi 2. We're around 41 to 47 FPS. It does jump up into the 50s every once in a while, but it just can't quite hit 60. I did turn Frame Skip on, and it does look pretty decent, but while you're playing it, you can definitely tell that something's going on here. Alright, so the final thing I wanted to test here was some PSP, and originally I was going to go with Chains of Olympus and a couple more games, but unfortunately every time I load this game up on the eMMC, it gets corrupted for some reason. I tried several different versions of it, and I just can't get it to work, at least with this version of EMU Elec on the Red Axis Zero. But I'm going to tell you right now, it probably wouldn't run well without frame skip, so let's go with something a little easier to emulate. We'll do Tekken Dark Resurrection. And from here, I want to show you that we are at 2x resolution. I do have a few hacks on here. And with it set up like this, it actually runs way better than I thought it would. Now again, Dark Resurrection is an easier one to emulate, but to see this running at 60, 2x resolution on a small board like this is pretty amazing. I'm just really surprised at how well it's working, but the S905 CPUs have been out for a while. Remember, this is the Y2. We're at 1.8 gigahertz with that same GPU that's in the X3 version. And when it comes to optimizations for these S905 chips, EMU Elec and Batocera have done a lot so far. I've got one more PSP game here to test, and this originally ran at 30 FPS on the PSP, so we're at 30 here, 2x resolution, with the same hacks I was using with Dark Resurrection. And this game is also running really well, but when it comes to that harder to emulate stuff like Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, Midnight Club, this little board is probably still going to struggle, but when it comes to the mid-range and easier stuff for PSP, we should be good to go with a lot of it. Now there's a couple other little things that I've been doing with this board. I've been really thinking about building a handheld with it, and we definitely need this software to get better. But I do have a ton of parts to mess around with that I've used for Raspberry Pi projects in the past, like this 7-inch IPS touchscreen display. It's designed for the Raspberry Pi 3, 4, and the Raspberry Pi Zero, and as you can see here, since we have that same form factor, the Redax Zero fits right where that Raspberry Pi Zero should have went. I've tested this with EMU Elect, over HDMI here, I only get half a screen, but with Android, I can get the full screen set up, but I just can't get touch working. I don't think it's built into the latest image for the Redax Zero just yet. And this whole thing can be battery powered. I just got a 10,000 milliamp hour little uh, battery bank here. Go ahead and boot it up. We get that AmLogic logo. And I've went ahead and flashed the latest version of Android that we have for the Zero right now back to the eMMC. But with Android, we get a full screen here. The speakers that are built into this little screen do work, but I just can't get the touch working. I do have it unplugged right now. There's a couple ways we can go about, you know, plugging this into USB to that little zero board there to get touch functioning, at least with other single board computers. But with this Android image I have right now, I just can't get it working. But I do think this would be an awesome little screen to build a handheld out of with the Redax Zero. So far, EMU Elec is coming along really nicely on this little board. This will be available for purchase later on in 2021, and if you're interested in checking out Android performance, I will leave a link to the original video I created in the description. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Definitely keep an eye on the channel. I'm going to be looking forward to some more development going on with this little board here, and once we get some really good stuff working, I will make a few more videos, and we'll definitely try to build a 7-inch battery-powered handheld with this thing. But that's it for this one. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And like always, thanks for watching.